Natural law theory um, refers to the idea that there is um, an external moral order that God has brought into an existence, that that moral order um, is an extension of God's reason and God's will, that he has knit into the fabric of the universe um, because of, of his eternal law. Uh, but it also refers to the fact that human beings, in principle, even in a state of uh, of, of sin with the noetic effects of the fall, that we can have access to some principles of the moral law, even in spite of our sin. Uh, it means that uh, as Christians, uh, as Protestant Christians, we recognize that sin has impacted the will, it has impacted reason, but even non-Christians um, have some access to the moral law. Uh, I, I think this is a principle we see from, from, from Romans chapter 1. Uh, Paul talks about that uh, the, the problem in society that he's indicting in Romans chapter 1 is not that the audience that he's condemning is not aware of the natural law. They are aware of the natural law. What they're doing, Paul says, is that they're suppressing the truth in unrighteousness. They're holding what they know to be true and suppressing it. They're holding it down, which means... I think from my vantage point, the, the biggest issue with the natural law today is not really our knowledge of it, it's the will's lack of desire to follow it. Obviously, reason and will have both been uh, corrupted by sin, uh, but the natural law tradition holds that sin has not extinguished knowledge, at least some minimal knowledge of, of, of the moral law. The reason that we have to champion and prioritize the natural law um, is because we have to figure out how to have common life together with individuals in our society who aren't Christians. Now, please hear me. This doesn't mean that when we utilize the natural law that we don't talk about Jesus. If the natural law is ever used to the exclusion of mentioning the name of Jesus or not mentioning scripture or scripture's authority, that's an improper use of the natural law. Rather, what the natural law allows us to do is to look at our neighbor uh, and look at kind of the problems confronting our neighbors in society and to say, okay, something is going awry right here. Why is that? Is that simply because uh, we've just randomly decided to live this way and not that way? Or is it the fact that we have, as a society, deviated from certain normative scripts that we are supposed to, to identify and live within because that's where our flourishing is to be found? I think it's important for Christians to care about the natural law um, because it, it gives us that moral language to relate to those in our society who may not be Christians but still have some awareness of, of a moral law and the existence of a, a moral grain to the universe. You know, right now in kind of contemporary Western America, we're going through this really tragic um, controversy around the transgender issue. And what's really fascinating is we're seeing a lot of non-Christians beginning to raise objections to the transgender movement. Um, because they're recognizing that it seems <clears throat> impossible for us to live against our embodiment as male and female without certain problems arising. So in a society that champions femininity, how do you champion femininity and authentic femininity when you have men who want to identify as women as well? And that's a principle of the natural law because the natural law is, again, it's speaking to the existence of that created moral order. Uh, we, we might use the language of creation order, that God has knit uh, a moral order. He's embedded it within creation, which means that every single human being, because they are members of creation, can have at least some access to their knowledge of the natural law, which then gives us an ability to communicate with them.